Well, let's get some more political reaction to what the Chancellor had to say now. I'm joined by UKIP's financial services spokesman, Stephen Wolfe. Welcome. Thanks very much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Uh, Labour has said, basically, that they'll ex accept the spending totals. Do you take that line as well? Well, I think they have to. We've got no choice. The country's in a real mess and we have a trillion in terms of debt. And our debt repayments are multi-billions every year. And so any cuts that we can make to this over-bloated uh, public sector that we can do is welcome. And so we would do the same. They have to. The only problem is, is this is a missed opportunity from Osborne to actually cut dramatically and really boost the economic growth of this country in the future. So he hasn't gone far enough? No, he hasn't. You know, it's clear that he hasn't because what we're doing is really t tinkering at the edges and not seriously looking at this big debt. And in doing so, he's putting the pressure on our future children and grandchildren. And it's not acceptable. It's not a fair on them or their families in the future. So what else should go then? What has he missed? Well, there's a huge number of areas that we can look looking at. UKIP has often said that our overseas aid budget is enormous. And in times of difficulty like now, we want to help our friends abroad, but we have to look after our own. So that's certainly one area that we think should go. Well, on that point, aren't you being slightly short-sighted? Because in terms of where UKIP stands on immigration, surely if people are helped in their own country, then there's going to be fewer people tapping on the doors here. Yes, but we believe that we can do that by opening up trade. Half the problem that you have in terms of trade, if you take the European Union, and I didn't want to bring that issue today because there are more pressing issues, if you take the common agricultural policy, it's recognised that by us being so protectionist, we're actually impinging, impinging on those farmers in other countries that could undercut the French farmers or those being subsidised. So that would be an opportunity to give them jobs, they would stay there, and they would have an opportunity to trade more freely. That's the best way. Open the markets, have free trade, lower taxation, hope small businesses can grow. But as things stand in 2015, hmm. we will still be part of the European Union, all those things will still exist. So how much really would you want to cut that age budget by? Well, we would say we should cut it completely for a period of time and then reassess it as our, as our finances get better. But that's not just the only area. We should be looking at local government. I mean, some suggest that in terms of the thousands of senior civil servants that are earning more than the, the Prime Minister, or indeed some are earning more than President Obama, that they should take at least a 5% uh, pay cut or actually have them freeze. But I mean, George Osborne's already shaved another 10% off their budget and given them more autonomy, more power to do what they want with that budget. Well, I'm saying that's welcome. Anything that actually cuts uh, the deficit is welcome. But the problem is that he's not doing it. 11, 11 billion in cuts is hardly anything compared to the debt that we have. What about the welfare cap? Where do you stand on that? Well, I think welfare is an enormous area that we have to look at. And tomorrow, uh, UKIP is part of its review process that, like any other mature political party has to do, has to consider how we, we can deal with that. And there, I have read in areas that there are savings that could be made of 44 billion. The Institute of Economic Affairs produced the paper. The Taxpayers Alliance have done the same. I think we have to look at the way that we can look at the health of our country, the education system, and ensure that we can make that a better system whilst making cuts. It's quite clear when you look at all the tragedies and unfortunately the way that we look at CQS and what's happened at the hospitals, there is a problem in the National Health Service, certainly the senior area. We've said for a long time that we should be cutting the salaries of those senior people, not signing up to the opportunity to let them leave with big packages. Those are the sort of cuts that we would face. Are you against ring fencing completely then? I mean, those, those protected departments today, uh, health, schools in England, overseas development, all that should go completely, should it? Those, those ring fences and, and all three of those. Well, there are two massive disadvantages that Osborne has created. Firstly, by not having a look at the, all the budgets, and he's only looking at a small portion, I believe it's about a third of the current public spending review, he's not really looking at this radically and properly. And secondly, by not including everyone and having these ring fences, he's failing to give this country the opportunity of hope by expanding our economic growth, by reducing taxation, getting people back to work and enabling our actual tax revenue to rise because we're giving ourselves the opportunity to get ourselves out of it. Okay, Stephen Wolfram, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much, My Cindy, pleasure. for joining me. Now, the